Signal received. Artemis? What? Hey guys and welcome back to more No Man's Sky. It's been a while because we started playing New World and we kind of had a really weird recording schedule because of the long queues. But I want to continue a little bit more with No Man's Sky. There's a few things I want to do today. I want to first of all see what is the next step for us getting the cliffs. And once we figured out the beginning on how to do it, if it's just a rinse and repeat, like, you know, go find monolith, get cliff, then we'll do a lot of that off camera. But we're going to do the first one here together to see what it's all about. And then we're also going to upgrade our ship now, which is the one I want to make my main uh, fighter ship at some point this is currently my exotic but this is the one we got uh, from the expeditions or sorry from the drops in the expedition the twitch drops which is my little silver fighter which looks absolutely fantastic and we want to upgrade that today as well to an s class and then we also want to look at some of the next farms that we're gonna set up i think i've been looking at acid and uh, some other things and we need some basic resources only for them but once we have all these farms set up to make acid to make lubricant all that stuff we're gonna we're gonna be able to look at the bigger things to craft that are actually using those things and to make the ones that are really worth a lot of money but we're gonna have to get gases for that as well so it's not gonna happen today but we're gonna start looking at at least some of the craftables like acid uh, today and where we're gonna put those farms first of all let's rename our starship silver surfer that's the only real name it's one of my favorite characters as well um, I love his background story. Anyway, that's a different story. <laughs> Let's go. And before we upgrade its, uh, its cargo, we're going to um, upgrade the Starship's class. So we're going to go from an A class to an S class. So upgrade the class. That's what I saved all my nanites up for. Starship class improvement confirmed. Yes. So now we have an S class Silver Server Fighter Starship. Beautiful and sexy. There we go. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the upgrades, apply augmentation. Actually, how expensive is it to put the augmentations in myself, like to pay for them for the moment? How expensive is that? Let me see, ooh, 40, 40 million? Yeah, I actually, do you know what? I'm gonna pay for, here we go. I don't think that's completed yet. I think there's more to upgrade, isn't there? Yeah, there's a whole new road down here as well. So I don't know how many I have left, but I didn't have too many to start with. So I'm not sure if we're gonna get all of them in. No, we're not. So we need three more for here and for our technology slots. Actually, they're already fully upgraded. That's brilliant. So we don't have to worry about them. I think they're fully upgraded. Well, we'll see anyway. I'm going to flip a couple of more ships to get some augmentations. Very lucky here, a small S-Class actually just landed and not only it's an S-Class, but look at this, it's only three million. And here's another A-Class as well. We only got one augmentation actually. The A-Class didn't give us any, but look at all these upgrades that is actually pretty amazing because the infra knife is an absolute amazing weapon okay let's apply the last three augmentations all right our ship is ready to go now it's not the fully modded out one we just have a couple of thrusters couple of infra knife shields basic thruster upgrades and some hyperdrive you know the yellow red and green system and all that some scanners and the teleport receiver so yeah it's very basic it doesn't have a huge range and that's absolutely fine for the big travels we're going to use our exotic right now anyway but i think to be browsing around in a local system it should be absolutely fine and we're also going to test out our ship now in battle so we're going to wait for some pirates all right, we have our first pirates coming in. Let's see where they're coming in from. There we go, right here. Let's give them straight away a run for their money. There we go, first one down. Nice. Oh, baby. And the second one is down. There we go, beautiful. And there was one more. Where are you hiding? Oh, that was it. Okay, you guys went down rather quickly. Okay, we're going to land here. I think there's a crashed freighter behind us as well. That looks pretty awesome. Okay, where do you need us to go? Alright, let's head this direction. Oh, look at this. This looks amazing. Ancient monolith detected, okay. I keep forgetting how sensitive uh, gravity is here. But yeah, let's learn all the words. We're definitely lacking Viking words, that's for sure. Oh, let's do this. 
I see the stone of the monolith, it's immovable, muted silver, and yet something lurks beneath. It's grey, it's yet not grey, Grimson calling out from somewhere below its cool surface. Locate a portal. Oh, so that's how it works. You find one of those monoliths, and then with that, you detect a portal. Yeah, that's all the way over there, but it's on planet, which is good. Oh, I love my ship. The lights in it look so amazing. The way you can see these engines, like, out there. Looks absolutely epic. Oh, coming in hot, here we go. Yes, this is one more of those portals. Very nice. So I'm assuming we're gonna have to find those portals to unlock more cliffs, I guess, as well. Well, we'll see now. Beautiful. Oh, wow. Okay, uh... Empower the cliffs to access the portal network. Okay. What do we charge it with? Okay. We have loads of carbon. We have loads of sodium. We have some hydrogen. Okay, the last one. Traveler capture loop enabled, anomaly event contained. The portal seems to beg me as I approach, demanding my attention. It requires me to activate it, requires me to travel on. I'm unsure if I should listen. Request this planet's address. Okay, so we have the address of this planet here. Does that mean we learn a new cliff as well now? No, we still have two cliffs. So how do we learn more cliffs? I know the travelers, but... Um, apparently when you travel from system to system, you also learn those cliffs, so we're gonna have to figure this out. Oh wow, why is it getting so dark? Okay, looks like we're gonna have to go back to Apollo to relay the portal cliffs. Okay, this is not the best planet to be having a conversation with anybody. <laughs> okay, let's uh, call Apollo. Yeah, this is super heated atmosphere right now. So let's make sure we actually have um, our shields up. Hey Apollo, how are you? Baking my biscuits off while he's having a conversation. Have you found the cliffs for your world? I'm almost ready. My suit is upgraded, my stomach is full, and I'm hired... I have hired a gag to look after my farm while I'm away. I love it. Ask about the farm. <laughs> yes, I have a farm. What of it? It's not much. Mostly fruit I found on my travels, but I'm hoping to expand. Anyway, it's no concern of yours. We have a portal to attend to. Well, I, I'm the same. I like to expand my farm as well. As I look at Apollo, I think of all that I saw was in the portal of what happened to Artemis... When they walk that same path, I think of the face of Atlas of the way Nada warned me not to return to those tunnels. I do not know if the portals are safe. Give Apollo the cliffs. I give Apollo the cliffs, asking them to take care. Remember what happened to Artemis. Uh, they assure me that they will promise to see me soon. Before I go, they advise me to find out what I can from this so-called null. They warn me to be careful too. <clears throat> yeah, null reference errors. Not very good. Okay, speak to Noel. Is Noel gonna show up here? Yeah, he is. There we go. Two lost souls. One who cared too much and one who cared too little. They live, their lives have not become what was promised, have they? Every sentient being that has ever lived has felt that way at some point. I know I did. Once upon a time, I was angry, confused in my own solitude. Imagine my surprise when you woke me. I know you didn't mean to. Oh. Oh, very good. Uh, I thought I was dying while I was talking. I know you were just playing around with portals, but whatever you did, I'm here now and I need your help. The Atlas is not what you think it is. Something is happening to the universe. Something I need your help to figure out. Ask why they need your help. The Sentinels do not just keep the peace across the universe. Their motives run deeper than that, seeking out anomalies in the multiversal structure and eliminating them from existence. Have you looked at me? What do you think a sentinel would do if they came across my form? Uh, <laughs> no, it has to be you, traveler. There's an observatory nearby. I will lead you to the location of a crashed freighter of great interest to our investigation. There we'll find the first secret, I'm sure of it. Know that the Atlas is neither enemy nor friend to us. No more than the air or the wind might be called such names. But it is terrified, it is in pain, and we have a responsibility to help its suffering no matter the cost. The observatory is actually planet side. Looks like it's right here. 
Oh, we have to land here anyway. And then go from here, I guess. Alright, let's go. Okay, here we go. Target is in range. Knolls, Knolls Observatory location. Oh, it's right down here. Wow! That is a massive structure. I can't see anything, so we're better off going in. Oh, there's some chests here. Very nice. Ooh, okay. Extract nanites. Is there anything else in here of interest? Okay, let's interact with the console. Null's prediction was correct. The terminal is curiously open to logs ready for me to read. This observatory appears to have functional as a salvage station managed by a geek specialist. A translator, they were accused of questioning things that should not be questions of sowing the seeds of dissent. This posting was meant as a punishment. But it appears that this posting was the making of them. They found strange things in the wrecks, aberrations, data that spoke of worlds that do not exist and events that did not happen. That Gek went out to investigate one such craft, the life signature of a Kovac still on board. They never returned. Is this how Nada and Polo met? Is this how my friends found each other? There's a signal on the console, a warning on repeat. 16 short bursts of data in a loop. 16. There's that 16 again. I extract the coordinates of the distress signal. A crashed vessel awaits me on another world. Okay, freighter crash site located. I think that's the crashed uh, freighter we saw earlier because I think we were on this planet um, earlier on. Let's see if we can land actually near the freighter. We don't have an encryption key. Search the crash site for secure containers, use analysis visor. So we're gonna have to go and dig around for those containers to find the encryption key. Okay, that's no problem. Actually, we're going to start with the cargo pods inside. Let's see if it's in here. Yeah, there's the encryption key, nice. Let's read the log. The swarm came to every world. The drones acted erratically, not attacking, just watching. Time passed and the sentinels did not seem too much of a threat anymore. They were peaceful now. We thought we had been forgiven. We were wrong. Ooh, you need me to find more encryption keys. Okay, can I find multiple and then read the whole thing? Yeah, I think I got them all. So let's see if we can get the rest of the messages. They struck as one. An attack somehow coordinated across unfathomable distances. With a fury exceeding all prior skirmishes, the Sentinels annihilated all biological life within the universe in a span of 54.2 standard minutes. Wow. Only I remained. The Korvax stood with me in the end to their credit. They concealed me with their flotilla as they headed towards the center. Log integrity compromised. Patching. They're coming. The screams of my friends resonate in every hall, every corner. The sentinels have found me. I told Nada to leave. I told them what we already know. All of us. We're not alone. Even if I die, Nada will find me again in another universe. Ten just like me. A thousand, a million. We're not alone, for every soul is many. Even in the face of sixteen, we must declare that we lived. We existed no matter the horror of the end. They are at my door, I... Unexpected termination. So basically every person exists somewhere else in another universe, so it's like a whole multiverse thing, okay. Salvage materials from the wreck, transmit the freighter's logs to null, okay. Oh, there we go, we have a terminus. A signal received, Artemis? What? I escaped, Traveller, I escaped. One moment I was running from them, the stars shifting, terrible smiles was in the dark. And the next I was here, well, wherever here is. This new world has a sun, has life, it's beautiful, but I think anything would be beautiful after the months spent in that awful place. Oh my god, he actually found a way to communicate to us after we put him into this uh, simulation, that's amazing. I'm ready to get going now, though. 
we'll do what we did before. Except there will be no shifting stars to stop us this time. If you bring this star chart to a nearby station, I'm sure we'll find each other soon. Oh, that is... Yeah, we just gotta... We can't tell him. We can't. Oh, my balls. Are we... <sighs> I think we're gonna continue the deception for now. I tell Atoms I will help, though much has happened since we last spoke. I tell them I am performing an urgent mission for a newly discovered traveler by the name of Null. I will assist Artemis with their star chart when I can, but it may be some time. They should attempt to find another pathway of their world if they can. Artemis' response is muted, but they do not disagree. They wish me luck I and terminate the communication. See, I would just be horrified if, you know, you tell him the truth and he goes, Oh, okay, thanks for telling me the truth. But then he's all like, ah. Uh, I don't really know, you know, if, um, what's the point of going on, you know, because I think we all need to have, like, a mission, you know, somewhere in life, and, and that's his, to find his way out, so. And he's on a planet that he's happy with, so maybe he will actually not be too worried that we take our time. This planet is just awful. You can't see anything, and everything is just attacking you. This is not a cool planet at all. Well, we're nearly there. I think there we are, yes. Let's see if we actually can get up there. Yes. Beautiful. Oh, holy crackers. Holo terminus activated multiple signals. Oh, the tower hosts a powerful transmitter. Let's speak to Noel. The storm was actually so fake when I landed on the surface of the planet, I couldn't see the ground. It was just all fog and I just smashed my ship right into the ground. That was quite scary, actually. What did you find out there? Tell me everything. Share the discoveries. I tell Noel of the Freighter and its recordings, how it spoke of a world where the Sentinels eliminated all life, leaving only a traveler and a single Corvax entity. I chose my words with care. You think I do not know what that Corvax entity is? Do not be so naive, Traveler. Do you think anything you have read is a surprise to me? But I had to be sure of what I suspected. I know it now. The Atlas is with you. You could not see these things if I did not wish it. That freighter was a wreck from a parallel universe. There are countless such places within our multiverse, dimensions where things happen differently. But there are three exceptions to this. The Atlas is omnipresent in all. A singular being with a singular perception, the Sentinels move between dimensions at will. Ask, ask about the Atlas. The Atlas created all life, and the Sentinels defended it, searching for anomalies within that creation. That they annihilated an entire universe. Well, something must have been quite wrong for them to do a thing like that. After a time, the Sentinels ended their services to the Atlas. What went wrong? It was the Travelers who corrupted existence. Our arrival was meant to herald a glorious age, but we made a terrible mistake. I committed an act beyond forgiveness, and from this deed, paradise was lost. But something is different in this cycle. The walls between universes, they grow with thin. Nada knows this, but they keep their head in the sand. So, Noel is probably named Noel because he was the very first? We must learn what we can from each species before we decide what to do. Visit the Viking cartographer and speak with them. I will translate. So, Atlas creates everything. Sentinels protect Atlas and um, eliminate every any anomaly in that perfect universe and Noel who was the first traveler messed up so I'm assuming after Noel messed up the Sentinels um, were like okay let's do a reset and kill everything and let it start again from scratch something like that okay I'm not going to continue the patterns and time quest right now because that obviously goes on for a bit uh, I again however because I have to go to the anomaly anyway to get to the portal Gonna go to the space anomaly, um, share the news of Noel's plan with Nada, uh, talk to them, and then we're gonna head back to our farm and freighter and have a look at what the next farm is that we potentially can do. Ask about Noel. Missing entity is not as missing as they believe. Nada is not traveler entity, but Nada is not young and foolish. Missing entity has the beliefs they, proje they project to be it. 
Missing entity is welcome in our home, but they do not desire it. So it goes. A missing friend has you do their business. Help if you must, but always discover for yourself. Think about what you do. Do not just follow instructions with your eyes not open. Ask about the Viking. Big grumpy fellers. They do not like friendly little gag. Perhaps they are wise, like all beings. You will see their value if you get to know them. Also, while we're here, let's see if there's anything more that we can unlock, especially on this side, to make money. Let me see. Okay, so let's unlock this. These are quantum processors. This one here is a portable reactor, quantum processors. Let's unlock all of them, because if we're going to start looking at making all these things to make money, we have to unlock them all. Well, there's some liquids here. Let's see how much we can unlock. That's um, accelerator, hot, actor, hot ice. So let's see if we can unlock all of that. I don't think we have enough to unlock all of them. No, not yet. So I'm gonna come back here after doing some nanite grind and then we unlock the rest. So let's actually have a quick look and see what they're worth. 1.5 million for a cryo pump, 1.5 million for fusion accelerant. Okay, se semiconductor is 320,000. There's a lot of high values here. I'm liking it. 15.6 million, the fusion igniter. So this is the big boy that um, is the most money, but that is made from a lot of components. So the portal reactor and quantum processor um, is not something that just gets made by itself, like from raw resources. I think the portal reactor or whatever one it is, either one of them is made from gases and other materials like the portal reactor here is made from liquid explosives and fusion accelerant and the fusion accelerant is nitrogen salt and organic and the organic catalyst which in turn is made from thermic condensate and enriched carbon i have no idea how to do that enriched carbon radion so you can see there's a whole chain of things that we're gonna have to figure out. So we're gonna have to make that whole crafting tree at some point and see, okay, here's where we start. This is what we need. And um, then we're gonna have to separate where we have to farm natural resources, like the gas, for example, which we can't put obviously into a farm. But what we could do is find the natural resources and then build a farm around it to use it to craft whatever it is we need to craft for that item that uses those resources. Now the focus of today's farm is going to be basically liquid explosives which is made from acid and unstable gel at a one-to-one -one ratio and acid and unstable gel are pretty straightforward made from raw resources not from any other crafted material. However the ratios is what we're going to have to figure out because acid uses 600 fungal mold and 25 mordant so that's like really two opposite extremes but I don't know the exact harvest ratios yet so you have fungal mold I don't know what it gives us, but I have somewhere a planet where I actually put some down so we can probably get that figure right now. But Mordite, I don't have, so we're gonna have to see. I'm assuming it's similar to Fesium, which is 42, but it could also be 84, that heavy medium, like um, Selenium and Frost Crystals have, for example, or it could be like Cactus Flesh, the extreme of 168, which brings me to Unstable Jail. Unstable Jail is uh, using 200 Cactus Flesh, but each seed gives you 168. So theoretically, the perfect amount of seeds would be 25 because that would mean there's zero left over. Now, the problem with that is obviously 25. I don't think we're gonna be able to make 25 times 600 unless, again, fungal mold is like ridiculous, like cactus flesh. But we'll see in a second. We have to crunch some numbers, but that is what the target is for today to at least have a proof of concept kind of farm where we get the ingredients together for liquid explosives. So I have a base set up here, which is fungal mold and ammonia and runaway mold. Now this planet natively supports fungal mold. I took over this trade station and <laughs> I put a teleporter here and everything. And I do like the idea of trade stations because you have everything there. You have a computer there. You have people to interact with. You have spaceships coming. So if you want to sell anything that you're crafting, you know, you can sell it to them. So what I think I might do with future farms, like I'm hoping where I can do something like build like a farm around a trade station. That would look really, really awesome, I think. But anyway, nonetheless, I can just basically plop them down anywhere here on the ground and the fungal mold will grow. But I'm a lazy person, I didn't want to constantly jump up and down, so I glitch built them into the trade station itself. Now, again, I usually wouldn't do that because a glitch building, say fungal mold, on a planet that doesn't support it, 
I kind of I wouldn't do that like you can't do it if you want absolutely like yeah but I kind of still wanted it to grow in its natural environment somewhat so if you don't know what glitch building is all you really have to do is select what you want to build like say the gamma weed I can't plant this anywhere here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna press Q go into um, the wire mode and then we press Q again and left at the same time now it has to be exact and then it will plant it because it thinks it's in the wire mode but you're actually placing the item now and then you can just remove it as well just like that now that would actually grow here that gamma weed would grow because as far as i know uh, growth is not really checking which environment it's in i could be wrong though but um as soon as you can plant it it will grow so you could basically i could plant everything here if i wanted to but i drew the line at fungal mold so let's see how much we get out of it Oh, we get 50. Ooh, okay, so that is another new number. And it's consistent 50, okay. So that at least makes it easy to get the uh, 600 because it's gonna be exactly 50. Now, I don't know if it will give us the exact same number in a hydroponic uh, tray. But we'll see, I guess. And I always appreciate that when you actually made a trade station your base, where it's gonna pack your ship. <laughs> I only noticed this now. Look where it parked my ship. It literally parks it right beside the base computer. It doesn't care that it's in a building. Now, what happens if we step in? Let me actually save the game first because I can obviously like um, summon my ship anywhere I want, but Will that completely explode because it's inside a building? Oh, it actually got out. Okay, fair enough. Fair play. This is amazing. So I would have expected it to just start knocking about and going completely crazy about everything and exploding. That is really awesome. But I like the way the game goes. Well, this is where the base computer is, so that's where the ship will go. Deal with it. <laughs> oh, look at that. Very nice. Are they already fully grown again? Can we make some more computer chips? Yeah, so there seems to be a full harvest here. So this is 20 computer chips, but we're only gonna make 10 and then we leave some of the other materials behind, um, you know, uncombined and leave the polyfiber and everything separate and put them in the freighter. But anyway, so if we want to make another set of hypertronic trays, let's put them in somewhere uh, through the door so let's make a little corridor here and then divide it left and right so so let's make about three corridors okay let's see how that's gonna work out so we're going to put a corridor can we put a corridor here on the side that doesn't seem to work so you can't put a corridor of a corridor so you need a junction okay so you need a crossroad junction so okay so we take this out then we're gonna replace this with a junction, like so. Okay, we're gonna take the right here, and now I wanna see if we make a room here, will that room be joined to the other ones, or is it too close or not close enough? I don't know, so let's have a look here. Okay, I get it. We can't have a closed corridor unless we're prepared to make a room. Okay, I get it. So what we will have to do is we have to delete this, Whoops, uh, delete this. And now we have to put a room into here. Okay, I get it now. Okay, now if we extend the room here, yeah, it will connect to the other one, which we don't want. So I wanna put it here. Um, three in should be enough. And yeah, so I think right now this should be enough. And then we could always put another corridor here and so on and so on. So right here, I hope you can make signs. Could you, can you make signs? That would be really awesome to have a little sign hanging here that says what this is. So anyway, let's see how many hydroponic trays we need. Now we need 600 fungal mold. Now, if we need 600 fungal mold uh, on the planet, it gave us 50, but that could be just like the natural plant, which gives you like some really odd number. Um, or it could be ending up 84 in the in the hydroponic tray. So we're going to go with what 50 if it would give us 50 and we're gonna put six um, Oh, sorry. We need 600. Yeah, we're gonna put 12 plants down. So this is 200 400 And 600 we don't know how much each mordite plant gives us So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put two here one should be enough 
in case it gives us 42, but just in case it doesn't, I'm gonna put two here and that should be enough. So we put Mordite here and Mordite here. And I don't know if I have enough fungal yet. I might have to go down and get more. So let's make a fungal closest. We can make 10, which is not enough, obviously. But like I said, I'm gonna go down to the planet surface and I'm gonna get more, so um, it will be fine. Okay, we need two more, basically. Now, um, once we have that, the next thing we need is unstable jail, which is the cactus flesh. So we need two of that as well. So why don't we replace that with a four, put two cactus flesh in there and two more night, and that should definitely be enough for one. And there we go. Perfect. All we need now is another two fungal mold and that should, this whole row should be one um, of each and should end up giving us one liquid explosive. And then all we have to do is duplicate it. We can just take two actually from this planet surface here. And then we put those two in here and done. Now the growing speed of fungal cluster is four hours. Uh, Mordite root is eight hours. And cactus, was that four hours as well? 16 hours. Okay, so that's a bit of a pain, but um, yeah, so in 16 hours, basically, we're gonna come back here because I'm, I'm not gonna do in between things because I know if you're a perfectionist and you have all the time in the world, you could come back and say, okay, every four hours I harvest this, every eight hours this, and so on and so on. And you could even build your farms in the ratio you need to have the perfect time every time you harvest to get the perfect amount. Harvesting these guys definitely takes longer than clicking one button on the biodome, but on the other hand, it allows us to expand much easier. But it's still, it's a lot of fun. You just hold down E and you just walk in a straight line. It doesn't really take that long. Anyway, I'm gonna leave this episode here. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys had a good time with it. If you did, remember to kick that like button in the balls and I hope to see you guys in the next video. And if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time. Until then, as always, huge pass and happy gaming.